Welcome to this presentation on the hybrid flexible flow shop with transportation times. This is joint work by Eddie Armstrong from Johnson & Johnson Research in Limerick and Michele Garafa, Barry O'Sullivan and myself, Hermann Simonis from University College Cork. What we will um, be talking about is a new variant of a known scheduling problem is the hybrid flexible flow shop with transportation times. And we solve that with different approaches so with CP, and we are comparing four different versions there. We have five different MIP models that we explored, and we also have local search variants uh, that we are looking at. And uh, the overall result uh, uh, is that CP works quite well, and MIP uh, not so much. Um, and uh, it depends a little bit on which CP model and which CP solver you're, you're using. We're also studying the factory layout problem. Uh, how does the layout of the factory affect the schedule? And in particular, we compare different high-level design scenarios. Should we use one facility or multiple facilities? And what other constraints do we want to include there um, in order to uh, get a, a good idea of how we should actually um, make our, our factory uh, in, in the future? A bit of background, uh, Johnson & Johnson is a large multinational company um, and they have a strong production and research presence in Ireland and this is how we get to work with them. Um, their focus is on consumer health, their medical devices and pharmaceuticals. And CONFIRM, um, you may not have heard of uh, us before, is the Irish National SFI Centre focused on manufacturing. Um, this includes groups from multiple universities. We are from University College Cork. Uh, our focus in particular is on data analytics and optimization, and that complements our work in the Insight Center for Data Analytics. So the problem description, what is this all about? Uh, well, we have here an example factory. It's a flow shop problem. We are starting with products uh, with raw materials uh, uh, in uh, the left of the, of the plant, and they move through the factory through different stages and leave as finished products there. And in each stage, we have multiple machines and we can choose which machine we want to use. Um, and they are identical, so uh, they give the same results. Um, and then we have to transport the items from one stage to the next. We're using little robots for that. Uh, the transportation times are significant. Uh, so sometimes uh, you just move to the next machine in the same lane. This doesn't take very long, but it takes much longer if you move to the other end of the factory. And therefore, the transportation times become a important part of the overall uh, quality of uh, the model. So the main elements of the problem, it's a flow shop. Um, so all jobs run through the production in the same sequence. Um, it's a hybrid flow shop. Uh, we have multiple identical machines available at each stage. And it's a flexible flow shop. We can actually skip uh, certain production stages for certain jobs. Uh, not everything needs to be done um, to all products uh, uh, in exactly the same way. And what we are adding is the transportation time. Um, the time for transport um, between stages is significant, um, but the transportation is not a resource limit. We have uh, many robots to handle the transport task, uh, so uh, this is not a, a resource limited problem. Um, and we have a typical layout of our plant in lanes where we have the stages uh, uh, in columns and the rows basically are the lanes and this gives us the, the shortest transportation time. The overall objective is the make span. Um, the production is not driven by due dates of individual orders uh, and uh, the make span gives a good overall indication of quality of the results. Why is this interesting? Well, this is an industrial use case, so uh, Johnson & Johnson introduced us to this problem that they have. Um, it's uh, also interesting as a scheduling problem because it has increased complexity over existing hybrid flexible flow shops um, because we can actually choose uh, um, the machine at each stage, um, but we have to take into account the transportation cost. The machines are no longer exchangeable in the schedule. In the traditional flexible flow shop, uh, the machines are uh, exchangeable and we can basically uh, use a lot of symmetry. We have a lot of symmetry to explore. Um, here we have a lot less symmetry because when we are in a certain place, then we have one machine which is nearest in the next stage and the others are, are further away. So uh, this breaks the symmetry. 
Um, and of course, we also now have preferred paths through the factory and uh, we cannot uh, limit ourselves only to these preferred paths, um, but we also don't want to use uh, a lot of detours uh, in our schedule. What we are not considering in this study are sequence-dependent setup times. We don't need that because our machines are highly flexible and uh, they can actually work on multiple things uh, uh, without uh, special setup. Um, we are not looking at buffer space. Um, the manufactured items are quite small, so we can stack them in front of the machine. Um, and we assume that we have the same production speed uh, uh, on all machines of the same stage, um, but not uh, on the machines of different stages. That can still happen. Um, so here we're assuming that uh, the machines on one stage basically belong to the same generation and have uh, identical uh, capabilities. And we are not looking at the resource limit uh, on the transportation. Um, we are uh, assuming that we have enough robots to keep the material flowing through uh, the plant without limitations there. Uh, of course, all of these things could be studied in the future as extensions. The objectives of the project were to identify the best tools to schedule um, a new plant uh, and explore a variety of different approaches and techniques. Uh, so we should not just focus on our preferred solution method or our preferred solver, but really make a comparison. And at the same time, we should answer some design questions before we are committing to one particular approach and, and one particular design of the factory. Is it better to have one or multiple facilities? Um, how far should the transport reach between the different lanes? Do we really need to be able to go from one end of the factory to the next? Or is it enough if we can only move between this lane and the next neighboring lanes? Uh, uh, and how much does this actually cost in terms of extra transportation time or waiting time um, because no machine is available? Um, can we exploit uh, the machines that we have uh, to offer better products? Uh, so instead of just producing the same product uh, as a mass production, can we do semi-custom production and uh, differentiate products and basically charge more for our products? Um, and then we want to provide some quantitative comparison based on typical production data um, for the design questions. Um, it's not currently intended for operational schedule at this point in time. So the different models that we explored, one is a CP model, and there we have two main alternatives. One is a DIFN model, and the other is an interval task variable model. I'll come to that in a moment. We also have the transportation time, and this can be handled quite easily with a table constraint. And this is easier than um, the sequence-dependent setup, which uh, needs some path uh, constraint typically. Um, we have the precedence between tasks uh, of the job, uh, and that uh, is easy to do. And we are using the CMAX objective, the make span. Um, the two main constraints are either a diff-end constraint or um, interval task variables. So the diff-end constraint has uh, um, for all jobs, uh, for all tasks within the same stage and all machines within the same stage, one constraint, a diff-end constraint, where we have rectangles here representing the task. Uh, they can't overlap uh, the task. We can actually move in time and we can move them between different machines of the same stage. And they are linked uh, with precedence constraints uh, to the previous task of the job and to the next task in the job. Um, the alternative is uh, the uh, interval task variables where we have one version of the task that is linked with the precedence constraints and then we have optional tasks for each machine of the stage. And we have to choose one of these um, optional tasks um, where um, the task will actually be produced. And only for uh, that task, uh, it will actually affect uh, the disjunctive constraint for that particular machine. Um, the other disjunctive constraints will not be affected by um, these uh, not selected optional tasks. Uh, that may seem a bit uh, too complicated, uh, but it's a much more flexible model than the DIFN uh, approach. Um, but we are not really using the flexibility in uh, this particular case, so we are quite happy with the DIFN model uh, to begin with. We have also tried dedicated MIP models uh, based on the literature for hybrid flexible flow shop, and we have four alternatives there. And obviously adding the transportation time is more complicated uh, in this case because we don't have a table constraint that just expresses this easily. Um, we tried and picked the best alternative on, on small scale test cases, but none of the methods really scales 
um, to, the expected, uh, to the expected problem sizes. Um, we have also done some local search and dispatch rule methods as a baseline and to provide an initial upper bound. Um, so here we are scheduling the jobs in a random order, assign each task to the first available machine. Um, and then for the dispatch rule, we explore different job uh, permutations as uh, uh, something to explore um, possible um, variants of uh, the, the schedule. With local search, we do that, but we also allow uh, swaps of tasks uh, and insertion of jobs in, in the sequence. All of this is written in Java, so it's a baseline uh, solution. It's not intended uh, to be an uh, improvement on the state of the art. Um, for the uh, different CP models, we have uh, implementations with Minisync. Uh, we have one version with Chuffed, uh, where we're using free search uh, and the defend constraint. We have a variant of this with Chuffed uh, with priority search. Um, then we tried Minisync with interval task variables that didn't work. Um, we tried Minisync uh, with a CPLEX backend solver uh, that didn't scale. Um, we tried the different MIP models that uh, we, we presented. Uh, um, they don't really scale either. And then we have two dedicated solutions, one with CP optimizer, um, with interval task variables and a black, black box search. Um, so this is basically uh, choosing how to make the assignment on its own. And we have a version with Sixers Prolog, uh, a diff end model, and a custom search routine that I wrote uh, uh, in Prolog. And the experiments, the first experiment that we are doing is compare different solution methods. So we have an instance generator there, um, creating instances between 20 and 400 jobs. Uh, with 25 instances per problem size. Uh, the parameters of the problem are chosen to reflect real-world factories. Uh, so we have eight stages, 10 machines in each stage. We can skip uh, some of the stages and we have a discrete power law for the job types. So a few products are quite common and we have multiple orders for those and therefore we have symmetry between those orders. Uh, and uh, we have, on the other hand, a lot of orders uh, for which we basically have uh, a dedicated uh, product type uh, and they are different to everything else in, in the schedule. Um, the transportation time is based on lanes. Uh, and so uh, if we are staying within the lane, we have minimum transportation time. The instances are available online uh, on Zenodo, so you can basically just go there and download uh, um, the instances and the description of the format. The experimental setup is uh, um, we are running um, with a single core of a Windows 10 laptop um, with a five minute timeout um, and we are providing an upper bound uh, by uh, doing 10 seconds of local search first and that gives us a, a good starting point uh, solution. Not all solvers actually benefit from that um, and we are also providing the best lower bound uh, to stop the search when we have found an optimal solution. Um, we do find optimal solutions for many of the smaller 20 to 30 job uh, instances, uh, but uh, obviously not for anything um, of the larger instances. And here we have the results. Uh, um, in Korean, we have the best re overall results, uh, and we see CP Optimizer and Sixtus are um, the, the winners there. Uh, Chuffed uh, with free search only can solve the small instances and then uh, does not actually find any improvement over the uh, given upper bound uh, within the five minutes. Uh, the priority search uh, with, with Chuffed is, uh, uh, is doing better, um, but it, it gives us good uh, uh, initial solutions. It doesn't improve them very much uh, afterwards. And uh, the local search is actually doing uh, quite well. Um, but overall, we see that the lower bounds that we have, uh, uh, there's still quite a gap between the lower bound and the best solution that we found. Okay, um, so this just summarizes this. I should mention that MIP does not scale at all. Um, so within the five minute uh, timeout, it does not find uh, improving solutions, even for the smallest instances. The second experiment is uh, um, a layout study. 
So we are looking at different scenarios for um, designing our factory. So we have a baseline here, we have a single factory, a single factory and we can move between um, the machines of uh, each stage uh, um, by paying a higher cost in transportation time if we are moving it further away. Um, but every move is possible. Um, the second scenario says we have two facilities, one where we do the first part of the schedule and one where we do the second part of the schedule. And when we move from one facility to the next, we have to pay uh, a higher inter-facility um, transport cost. The third scenario is similar, but uh, here we have two facilities which do the full range of the production um, and uh, we can still move between facilities, but have to pay the price uh, of the inter-building kind of transport. Um, this is uh, not allowed in the scenario 2D, uh, where uh, we can um, choose where we want to make the product, but then we are committed to that facility and have to schedule everything within um, that facility. And in scenario 2E, um, we basically um, have pre-assigned 80% of the jobs to one specific uh, uh, facility um, to reflect that uh, the orders are required for some geographical region and therefore should be made uh, in a particular place and only for uh, some of the customers we can choose where we want to make the product. So we have these five scenarios and we test those um, here we get the best results uh, uh, for an example with 200 jobs uh, with Sixtos uh, and we can see um, that our baseline here has an average uh, Cmax of 176. Uh, um, we actually have a 4% uh, increase in the scheduling time uh, if we have uh, two sequential facilities, uh, but only 1% um, increase if we have uh, um, two parallel facilities and uh, that increases to a 2% increase if we are not allowed to move material between um, the uh, different facilities. And we have uh, no further increase in cost and actually a, a small decrease uh, once, once we are committed uh, with most of our orders. Uh, basically here um, we have a smaller search space so we can explore a little bit more of the search space within the given time. Uh, and get a slightly better result uh, overall. Um, the results are similar for the other approaches that were tested. Uh, so we can actually say, yeah, it uh, um, would uh, take uh, something like a 4% cost increase if we have two sequential facilities uh, and a 2% uh, increase if we have uh, two independent facilities uh, where we are not allowed to move uh, between um, the factories. Okay, in summary, what we have looked at is a new variant of a known scheduling problem. It arises from a flexible new factory design um, with more flexible machines, uh, uh, less intended for uh, mass production and more intended for semi-custom production. Uh, the transportation time between the machines and all locations is an important element of the schedule um, and that complicates the model. Um, we can use that uh, uh, with a table constraint in CP quite nicely, uh, but it's much more complicated in MIP. Uh, good solutions are obtained with CP for large problem instances, but not all CP models achieve the same solution quality. Um, and uh, it's important here to see that uh, um, concentrating only on small scale examples does not really predict uh, how well the models will scale. Uh, so you have to do the examples at scale uh, initially as well, um, just to, to get a fair comparison. The MIP results are, are pretty weak, uh, although we have tried um, four of the existing models uh, from the literature um, with the extension to transportation times, uh, they don't scale uh, very well. And we still have a, a gap uh, between um, the best lower bound and the best solution found, uh, that is something to work on. Um, we have looked at different uh, uh, factory design studies uh, and used the scheduling model for that and that gives us uh, uh, interesting results uh, that we can use as part of the decision, decision making. Um, the results scale to hundreds of jobs and here we see 1000 jobs, 80 machines solved with Sixtus. Uh, so we can solve problems of these uh, sizes um, quite uh, nicely within the given time. 
Okay, that's it. Uh, um, if you have questions, I'm available for answering questions. And you see here all the ways you can interact with Confirm um, as well. Um, so there's lots more uh, that you can actually learn about smart manufacturing there.